Church here, and welcome to the Game Grinder, and today we're doing a pickup video. And for anybody new to my channel, my pickup videos include recent games that I picked up. I usually will include game footage to kind of show off what those games are, share reviews of games that I know a lot about, and chat about some of my experience with those games. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump to it. So pretty much immediately after my last pickup video, I got the Ghost of Tsushima Collector's Edition. I'm sure at this point everybody has heard of Ghost of Tsushima. It's kind of one of the uh, front runners for Game of the Year this year. I thought the game was absolutely fantastic. This won't be my pick for the Game of the Year, but it might make my Game of the Year list. But essentially this is a open world action adventure game. You play as a samurai or ex-samurai Jin Sakai during the fictional Mongolian invasion of Japan. And as far as open world games go, this is definitely one of the best open world games. And if you're interested in seeing more of what this collector's edition comes with, I did an unboxing video, so I would recommend checking that out. Then just keeping things going with collector's edition, this one's going to be a little tougher to show off, but this is the Tony Hawk 1 and 2 remake collector's edition. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I was very interested in getting this game, and the collector's edition wasn't that much more expensive, and it comes with a actual skateboard deck from Birdhouse, one of the uh, skateboards that was included in the original game. I don't know the quality of the deck itself, I don't know if I would recommend using it. But I will say Tony Hawk 1 and 2 Remake are absolutely fantastic. What's really cool is the friends that I used to play Tony Hawk 1 and 2 with are the same friends I was able to play the remake with. And we have since played through the entirety of Tony Hawk 1 Remake, and I'm just waiting for the opportunity to be able to run through all of Tony Hawk 2 as well. And I would hope everybody is familiar with the Tony Hawk games. They were pretty much the peak of kind of like the extreme sports games, skateboarding games especially. They're a lot of fun though. The remakes look great. They didn't really change much with the gameplay itself. They added a few refinements. Basically all the tricks and techniques that are available in Tony Hawk 2 are also available in Tony Hawk 1. And they added a few extra things to do. So uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend the Tony Hawk remake. Then keeping things going with collector's editions, uh, I got a collector's edition and a limited edition. Every once in a while Square Enix has some pretty great sales on their website, and these next couple games I picked up through one of those Square Enix sales. First up here is the limited edition Life is Strange Calm Before the Storm. Very similar to the Life is Strange limited edition, this also comes with an art book, soundtrack. Now, this isn't actually a full sequel to Life is Strange, I guess this is kind of more of like a side story, but I've heard great things about it. Life is Strange is actually the Cartridge Club Game of the Month for December of 2020. So that is when I'm going to finally sit down and play through Life is Strange. It's been a pretty high up on my backlog of games to play next for quite a while. But I love that the Cartridge Club kind of gives me that extra bump to finally check out a game. And who knows, maybe I'll follow that up immediately with this one, because they're not super long games by any means. And then along with that, then I also got the Life is Strange 2 Collector's Edition. Unfortunately, this is one of those Collector's Editions where the game comes outside of the box, which kind of drives me nuts, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, again, this kind of comes with like art book. There's a eight inch or eight and a half inch. I forget the exact size of the, the smaller uh, vinyl soundtracks. And of course you get the game and some other goodies. Uh, this doesn't contain the characters from the previous Life is Strange games. This is kind of like a whole new deal dealing with some brothers. But again, I've heard nothing but great things about this game. So really looking forward to finally be able to check this out. So next up, before we're jumping into some more games, let's look at some gaming collectibles that I picked up. Those are always a lot of fun. And first up here are a couple amiibos. I got the Hero Amiibo from Dragon Quest XI. Absolutely loved Dragon Quest XI. Fantastic game. Do recommend it for anybody who likes traditional JRPGs. And then along with that, I also picked up Joker from Persona 5. Now, I haven't played Persona 5 yet, but again, it's one of the, the higher uh, JRPGs up on my list. I actually don't have the game yet, but I do hope to get to this game eventually because I've heard nothing but the best about it. And then as I was kind of revisiting, re-developing uh, myself in the Last of Us universe when The Last of Us 2 came out, I remembered that there was a Last of Us uh, American Dream comic series. The first issue of the comic actually came with the Pandemic Edition of The Last of Us, which is the collector's edition that I was able to get. And I'd never finished reading that series. And fortunately, I was able to get a very good deal on the graphic novel 
A Last of Us American Dreams. This contains all four issues in one, so that's pretty neat. Still haven't read this yet. Usually when I pick up these things, they go on my recent pickups shelf, and then as I move things out, uh, I'll kind of like go back through them. So, but yeah, definitely happy to have that and add that to the collection. Then next up here is something a little unusual, and that is the Near Orchestra Concert 12,018. Now this is a Blu-ray recording of the Near Orchestra Concert that was on tour in Japan and the United States. This is from the tour in 2018. There's actually a new Blu-ray coming out of the 2020 tour, but this is a live orchestra of music selected tracks from Near and Near Automata. Yoko Taro does make an appearance at the concert, and I can't remember the main uh, singer for these games, but she actually does some of her songs. And yeah, I went to a live version of the show in Chicago earlier this year, along with It's Rocket Sauce and Chris the Old Ass Retro Gamer. So that is pretty neat, and happy to add this to the collection. I can kind of relive that concert anytime I want now. Then keeping in the theme with music, apparently I am a music box collector now. And what I mean by that is I've actually picked up a series of music boxes from Square Enix. Uh, and the first two I got here, uh, one from Nier Automata and also one from Nier Replicant slash Nier Gestalt. I'll share some pictures of what the music boxes actually look like. I'm not going to play them. There's videos of these on YouTube if you want to check those out. But it's just a little short uh, music box. Uh, I think they're only like six to ten second uh, music loop from the songs that these uh, come from and the Nier Automata one is from Weight of the World and the Nier Replicant Nier Gestalt one is from Kane Salvation. And along with those I actually picked up a couple music boxes for Final Fantasy 7 Remake as well and we got two of those. One of them is for the Final Fantasy 7 main theme and then the other is for Aerith's theme. And I thought overall these music boxes were pretty neat. I love video game music and these were relatively inexpensive compared to what a lot of things would be. You'd think these would probably be more than what they were selling for. So happy to add those to the collection and I actually have a couple more on pre-order which I think are on the way now. And keeping the music going, I also picked up a vinyl and this is for Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Now this vinyl has been available for quite some time through Mondo. But Limited Run had randomly posted a bunch of Mondo's vinyls on their site and kind of, you know, gave me that extra bump to finally nab the soundtrack. Love the soundtrack, love the game. I would like to have the CD version of the soundtrack that came uh, as a pre-order bonus with Castlevania Symphony of the Night when it was originally released on the PlayStation. But I digress, I don't have that and, you know, uh, this isn't something I'll actually listen to as I do have digital versions of the soundtrack and when I pick up vinyls they're mostly just for collectible collector items. I actually don't have a, a record player but that is totally fine with me and this is a pretty neat package has some nice artwork in there comes on two vinyl discs so that's pretty neat. And I actually got a few other collectibles. These are, I'm not going to actually pull out of where they are currently displayed. I picked up a few Witcher 3 statues. For the Cartridge Club, August game of the month was The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, and I had never played that before. It was a game that I really wanted to play. I'm sure that I would have enjoyed it, and turns out I really did enjoy that game. Such a fantastic game. And then I found out there are some pretty neat statues that were relatively inexpensive compared to what uh, figures or statues go for. So I decided to pick up a statue of Geralt, Yennefer, and Ciri. Ciri was a little bit tougher as she's the only statue that is sold out. Tends to go for two or three times what it actually retailed for, but I managed to get one for about retail price, so pretty happy about that. And then lastly, for these extra collectibles, I also got the Final Fantasy VII Retro Figures box. And this was a blind box that came with eight figures. Uh, when we ordered this, a lot of people didn't know if the entire thing was going to be random, but turns out that pretty much every one of these boxes you get all the characters and one additional random chaser figure, potentially, and I didn't get that bonus figure, I got the, the regular set and an additional cloud. The chaser figure is Cloud and Address. They are a little smaller than what I thought they were going to be, but they did give the measurements so it's kind of on me for not knowing that, but I think these are pretty sweet. All right, moving on back to video games. As always, I can't do a pickup video without having some limited run games to talk about. And let's do that. So first up here is uh, some of the most recent pickups that I've gotten. Uh, this is a series of WayForward published games. Two of these developed by WayForward, one of them 
only published by WayForward. Uh, but this one I was pretty excited about, and that is the Mighty Switch Force Collection. And along with that always comes the bonus art card. And the Mighty Switch Force games are ones that I've always wanted to play. I've always heard great things about them. And I picked up the Collector's Edition for this because it comes with the soundtrack. And the soundtrack I've heard a little bit from. And it's music by Jake Kaufman, who is one of my favorite video game composers. And these games look a lot of fun. I've heard, like I said, always heard great things about them. My only real taste of Mighty Switch Force was one of the uh, additional DLCs in Shantae Half Genie Hero with the Officer Mode, which is actually heavily inspired by Mighty Switch Force. But now I have the collection, so I can finally jump into those. The next is the game that was published by WayForward, which is pretty interesting because they usually develop their games. So I don't really know the backstory on, on this one, but this is Mystic Bell. And along with that is the art card. And this is a retro styled platformer, looks pretty sweet. Don't know a whole lot about the game, haven't really heard much people talk about it. But they actually developed another game I'm pretty interested in and I would love to get a physical release of some sort and that's Ultionis, A Tale of Betrayal, which is this uh, another kind of like retro action adventure indie game. I'm not really sure how to describe that one, but that one looks pretty neat as well. So again, happy to add this to the collection. And then lastly, from a way forward, uh, is Vitamin Connection on the Switch, along with the art card. Uh, again, I still don't have a Switch just yet, but you know, decided to still pick up a few games, mostly just limited ones, of course. And this one is definitely out of my wheelhouse of games that I would normally uh, be interested in, but again, I'm a big fan of Way Forward. I've heard pretty great things about the game. Watching the gameplay it looks pretty weird. It's kind of like more almost like mini game focus that you can play with two people or play by yourself. Kind of like has some rhythm elements to it. But eventually when I finally do get a Switch, I can check it out. Uh, and this one I got a little while ago and that is another limited run release. And this is Jay and Silent Bob Mall Brawl along with the bonus art card. And this is actually uh, the second Jay and Silent Bob like retro game. Now this is actually a NES game. This comes with a cartridge playable on the NES. I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan. I love Jay and Silent Bob. So it's pretty much a no brainer. And these are basically retro beat em ups. So pretty neat. And then lastly for limited run is Indigo Prophecy with the art card. Indigo Prophecy is first released by Quantic Dream. Uh, they're mostly well known for Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, and Detroit Become Human. I've always heard nothing but the best about Indigo Prophecy. I love Quantic Dream games. If you haven't played them, would recommend them. Don't let the naysayers detract from your interest. They're very story heavy games and they're kind of like interactive movies which hey, I think it's a pretty cool form of entertainment. So it'll be pretty cool to finally uh, get my hands on this one. All right, and then on to the last batch of games here, and these are all new releases, or mostly new releases. So let's get right to it. Uh, first up here is the game that I am currently playing, and that is 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. And it's pretty neat that this comes in a slipcover and includes an art book as well. This is the latest release from Vanillaware. Vanillaware is mostly known for games like Odin Sphere, Dragon's Crown, and now hopefully they will be known for 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. I wasn't really sure what I was getting into. The trailers didn't really give a great idea of what this game was. But then again, I don't watch a lot of trailers to tell me on a game. Basically, it was Vanillaware. I was instantly sold. And I will say this is by far, and I mean by far, my favorite Vanillaware game. Odin Sphere is awesome. Dragon's Crown's awesome. I haven't played Muramasa yet or Grim Grimoire, but I and loving this game. It's like 60% story, dialogue, following these characters, having conversations. The other 40% of the game is this like mecha battle simulation. It's a very interesting blend of a game, but the story is incredible. The voice acting is absolutely fantastic. Really neat time travel elements and mystery involved with the story. Kind of a doomsday scenario. Let's save the world sort of. It's really hard to explain, but I would say if if what you're seeing about this game looks interesting, if you enjoy Vanillaware, if you like mecha, if you like mystery games, if you like time travel games, I don't want to say visual novel, but if you like visual novels, like really look into this game. It is so good, and I've seen very, very few people talking about this, and that is unfortunate because this game is amazing, and this most likely will make my end of the year uh, best games of 2020 list. Then next up is a game I already have digitally, and that is Shantae and the Seven Sirens. And if you notice anything about this, this is actually the Japanese release of the PlayStation 4 version. And I ordered this entirely so I could get this pre-order bonus Shantae acrylic stand. That's how much of a sucker I am. I mean, obviously I have a little bit of a Shantae collection, so trying to keep that collection 
uh, pretty much complete, and now this uh, has made me consider, do I need to get other regional releases of the game if I want to include other pre-order bonuses in the collection to be able to say, like, I have a, like, a complete Shantae collection. I'm not sure. I'm debating it. Probably going to be going in that direction. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I do have the limited run version of Shantae and the Seven Sirens coming, so most likely you'll see me talk about that in my next pickup video. Maybe that'll go to its own video itself, just because I ordered multiple copies of it. We shall see. The next up is another recent release that I just got, and that is the Dark Pictures Anthology Little Hope. This is the most recent game by Supermassive Games, the second in their Dark Pictures Anthology series. This is the same dev that made Until Dawn. If you haven't played Until Dawn, I made a review of that game. Would definitely recommend checking that out. And Until Dawn is one of the best horror games you can play. Fantastic PlayStation 4 exclusive. The first Dark Pictures Anthology game was Man of Medan, which I included in my games I beat in 2019 video. I really enjoyed that. Some people weren't so hot on that, but I'm seeing pretty much universal praise for Little Hope. So hopefully I'll be playing this one soon. And kind of keeping the horror theme going, I also picked up a Blair Witch. This recently got a North American release. There was a PAL version of this available for a while. And I had thought that this game was VR compatible, which really had me interested. It's a first person horror game and I heard pretty much great things about it, but apparently it's not VR. So I'm not really sure where I got that mixed up. Actually, it just got a VR patch or VR version if you have like Oculus or any PC VR system, but unfortunately it's not on PS VR. So maybe that will come later, I'm not sure, but I've heard pretty good things about this. Kinda gotta separate it from the movies. Uh, I know a lot of people aren't too crazy about the movies. I actually really enjoyed the original Blair Witch Project, but this basically just kinda takes place with in the universe, like using some of those ideas, uh, but sounds pretty neat. And next up, I had mentioned uh, Vanillaware and Grim Grimoire, and that was actually the only Vanillaware a North American release that I was missing, so I decided to pick up a copy of Grim Grimoire. And lucky for me, at the time, there's a person on eBay selling, uh, must have came, came across a box of these or something, brand new sealed copies of Grim Grimoire for crazy cheap. So I decided to pick up a copy, which now it's like, I don't know if this is something I'll open and play, or maybe I'll just hold on to this and pick up an open version. Sealed older games, I don't know. It's kind of neat. I, I I don't buy games to keep them sealed besides like my Shantae games, because I get them digitally, but it's fully my intention to play games. But for the price that I got this for, who knows? But I don't know a ton about this one. Uh, it's kind of like a, a strategy, like RPG in some weird way, defense game. But I've heard pretty good things about it from those who have mentioned things about this in the past. So happy to complete the Vanilla Rare Collection and I will have to play that one sooner than later. And then lastly is a very, very random pickup. Best Buy has some pretty good sales on games once in a while. And this is one of those and that is Bridge Constructor Portal. It's kind of like a puzzle game where you make bridges it's physics based, kind of like a fun, kind of silly sort of gameplay style. And this one implements Portal, which is one of my favorite games of all time. If you haven't played Portal, what are you doing? Play Portal, play Portal 2. They're amazing, absolutely amazing. I love them so much and enough to pick up this game. But for the price I got this, I was like, what the heck? Who knows when I'll get to this, but I'll play it eventually because more Portal. All right, so that is going to do it for this pickup video. Of course, as always, I would love to hear your thoughts on some of these games. Have you played any of these that I haven't yet? Have you played any of these ones that I have played? Hopefully somebody else out there has played 13 Sentinels. We need to get the word out because that game is fantastic. But yeah, definitely let me know your thoughts on some of these pickups. And then as always, thank you very much for watching and I will talk to you next time on The Game Grinder.